YouTube. Welcome to my channel. So I love this sweatshirt. It's adorable, isn't it? Super gothy, super nostalgic, Beetlejuice, you know. But despite it being a 2X and literally the largest size that they sold, I don't like how tight it is. So I am going to fix that. I'm going to take this lovely sweater that I feel matches this quite well. And I am going to, it's a cardigan that I thrifted a while back um, for another project, but then I couldn't do what I wanted to do with it. So I um, have just sort of kept it around. I've worn it a few times, but it's very, very old lady and reminds me also of my uh, teenage years in the 90s of wearing a lot of shapeless cardigans over everything because I was, you know, concerned about my weight. Um, but I say screw that now. Let's cut it up and I think I'm going to add some like, probably I'm going to make the arm, like that's the funny thing is the arms are like huge and then the rest of it is like just a smidge tight. I think I'm going to add uh, some cute triangles into the side and then like a cute triangle in the back and I also want to figure out how to make this hood a bit bigger too. Like. It's just so tight. Um, yeah, let's see what I come up with. I think it's gonna be fun. Maybe give myself some little, uh, did this one have finger holes? No, I made finger holes. Uh, the seam kind of popped, yeah. But you know, I'm gonna see if I can make this cuter. Uh, something that I feel more comfortable wearing, but that still is warm and cozy, you know, for our so, so freezing 60 degree weather in the desert here. Um, I mean, it does get cold. You get used to it, and then it gets cold, and it does occasionally get down to the 40s or 30s, rarely. But, you know, there's times, times when I need a, a good sweatshirt, but I want it to be cuter, like way cuter. I also got this, like, on Super Sale, which is the only reason why I bought it, even though it was tight. Um, I forget. I think I ended up getting this for, like, 13 bucks or something like that at, at the Hot Topic one year. Hmm. It's gonna be a fun adventure. So I am okay. So I am starting with adding stuff into the side seam. Okay. So here I'm gonna take. I have just found these sides. I, I found the sides based off of kind of the underarm of the sleeve, and then here. So what I'm gonna actually do because I also want to make some alterations to this seam uh, to the sleeve width here. I'm actually gonna make these a wee bit narrower. I'm actually just gonna cut through to here. And then I'm going to cut open part of this sleeve, like maybe a couple inches, um, or maybe nip, pick it open. I'll see how, how, uh, hard the, or how hard it would be to unpick a portion of this. I probably am not going to put this exact seam back in here, honestly, whatever alterations I do. I have done a number of sweatshirt cut apart projects before. And like the last time I did one, which is this Harley Quinn sweatshirt, um, I think I ended up resetting the whole sleeve. Yes, from the looks of it, I ended up resetting the whole sleeve. So, uh, so yeah, we're gonna see what how this goes, and pray that I don't fuck it up because I do really like the sweatshirt, and I don't want it fucked up. Okay, by taking off the whole sleeves, this means that I can actually, I want to put um, a gusset basically up to here, where I want, roughly where I want the underarm to be. I'm gonna kind of probably take this over to my mannequin and just double check, but I, like, I want the arm of the, or the sleeve of the sweatshirt to be smaller. Um, um, if the sleeve is too small, I actually have some plans to possibly either use some of the sweater material to add length, or even use some lace to kind of, like, Again, got this up because it's Lydia Dietz, and um, if Lydia Dietz doesn't have lace on her, then, you know, I don't know. I'm also thinking about somehow incorporating lace into the hood. I still want this to be warm, but I, like I said, I want it to be more fashionable, especially because I don't necessarily need the warmth as much here in um, Vegas in the desert, you know? 
Uh, but yeah, so this is going to allow me to kind of like choose a different point. And since I'm going to be adding width, it doesn't matter if I lose a little bit in here. All right, so I thought I'd just take a second to explain a little bit about what I'm thinking about doing. Um, so, putty. I want to put a, uh, like I said, what in the center back? I might do some lacing or something fun on it. And I want to put uh, panels on the side. So they're going to be panels like this. And I'm going to see how long I can make them. They're basically are going to sort of be dictated by the length of the sweater that I'm working with it. It is a, um, like, a slightly below waist length cardigan. Um, so we're going to see how, how that plays out. I, I need to kind of compare it. But this is going to be the basic shape of the triangles that I've, or the, the inserts that I'm going to put in these three spots. Um, and then I'm thinking I might do something with some lace on the sleeves still. Like, there's part of me that was thinking about possibly putting um, lace on top of at least one of the panels just for, like, some contrast and fun. I don't know. This is all kind of getting made up as I go. What I'm doing right now is figuring out, so I've drawn a cut line in pink, and my seam allowance, or my, and my stitch line in blue, with a half an inch in between. So now I'm basically figuring out how big I can make this piece this way. So that there's still enough seam allowance and everything on it. And then I'm going to take, so now I also have my... Now, because I folded it based on this point, I now have my center line. So I can mark where this meets at five inches, and then I can draw my point from there. This is, the, I made a mark here on the stitch line, because I know I need 16 stitchable inches, roughly. Getting, so I'm getting about four and a half. That's fine. If we put this on a perpendicular, just so you kind of see that same shape that I drew. I don't know if you can see that now. Yeah, kind of. So I put a line there. And then, um, like I said, I measured down. My ruler is 18, add 19. Um, I think I'm going to add a little bit extra. I'm going to add one extra inch, actually, just for safety precautions. Okay. And so now when I cut this using the pink line, not the blue line, I'm going to use the pink line because that's the cut line and the blue line is the stitching line. I will have my piece and then I can use this to as just a pattern on the other half of the um, sweater front on the other sweater front so that I have the exact same pieces. Again, I am using a very, very tightly knit sweater, so I don't have to be quite as worried as I might be if I was using a loose sweater. If I was using a loose sweater, I actually would probably um, put a stay stitch, like mark everything, put stay stitches in, and then cut it just out of fear of things unraveling. But in this case, this is fine. This isn't going to like immediately unravel. And now I have that diamond shape and that can go in my scrap bin. So I can use this exact shape you gotta remember which is front and which is back but the roll helps. I'm gonna be able to line this up on this piece and just cut it out exactly the same. I like being extra I've decided I'm putting um, 
lace on top of these. And what's really funny is this now makes me think of like one of my favorite Hot Topic corsets from like my early 20s. Yeah, I miss that thing. I think I still have pieces of it. I cut it up and tried to turn it into like a belly dance top and bottom. It did not work as well as I had hoped. I, I didn't think it through and made some mistakes. So anyways, so I'm going to put lace on these and I've also figured out how big to make the very last piece. Um, it's going to be uh, about 26 inches long. It's going to be cut out of the center back panel. Um, here, let me, let me lay it out. So I just ironed the center back panel. And this one I'm going to cut basically from this corner down here, make it as wide as possible, and then um, insert it. This will also get lace over the top of it because let's just be extra. Um, also, I'm not so worried about this. The lace isn't stretchy, but I'm not really worried about actual stretch anymore at this point in these pieces because of the fact that I'm making this so big. Um, I, this is like more aesthetic, less stretchiness. And boom, there's the piece for the center back. We're gonna do this primarily with the serger, I've decided. So that's great because I haven't really talked to people about my serger or using a serger. Um, however, Anything that I'm doing here can be done on a regular machine with a zigzag stitch. Like, that's a great way to have, um, uh, to sew stretch fabrics is just a regular machine and a zigzag stitch. Or if you have a machine that has stretch, stretch stitches built in. So, like, uh, my newer machine has the, has a bunch of different stretch, stretch stitches already programmed into it. Like, you just slide it around and, and use those. Um, and basically they make a pattern um, that allows there to be stretch within the fabric without it popping. So it's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, like I said, in this case, I'm going to sew this all together pretty much with the serger. The hood is also very small, in my opinion, for my head. Um, when I have the hoodie up, it actually kind of lifts up right here. I don't like that. Um, and I don't like how tight this is to my neck. So I'm going to actually drop this and then I have these two sleeves left and I'm going to figure out how to modify the hood on this in combination with those and make it bigger and more dramatic and more Lydia. Okay, we're going to talk about what I think I'm planning with, with the hoodie. So I'm going to talk about the process. So I, I cut the hood off of the... Um, Sweater and I've already sweatshirt and I've already decided that um, so originally Originally it overlapped like this But I've already decided that I don't want that because that makes me feel claustrophobic So it's gonna actually end up sitting open a couple of inches to either side so that will help with uh, not having to necessarily alter this or this length here, I think that that will because I think this length here is what was causing it to pull up. And this is the part that's going to be a little bit harder to alter. I kind of have an idea in my brain, and I'm going to show you how... I'm going to sketch it out onto this piece of paper so that I basically have can make pattern pieces for putting this together, because I want to kind of change the shape of it, and um, I'm not necessarily going to be adding more length, Although if I, if it comes down to it and I feel like I need to, I will try to figure out a way to add right here, but instead I'm going to add in here and add the shape out. So let's see how that goes. So I already traced it with pencil. I traced it in pencil. So this is the shape of my hoodie. And what I'm kind of thinking is instead of altering anything down here, I think that I want to take the shape and elongate it back this way. And down this way. So this will end up kind of flopping in the back and being like cute and whatnot. But what I think I want to do is I think I'm going to take... I don't want to go down here. Maybe here. I think what I want to do is 
is basically make stripes. So purple, purple, black, purple, black. Um, oh, I wrote purple, black, purple. Maybe, maybe I have like sort of a, that sort of thing where I've got that gives me, you know, several lines, and I can use a little piece down here and a little piece. So I'm gonna end up chopping this out, which I think, like, if I cut this here, then I should be able to get this next black line here. I kind of gotta play with what what I actually physically have available within this hood, because I don't really have anything extra. I just got my serger back from the machine doctor. Um, so this is the serger I have. It's a white super lock. Um, I really, I've had this since I was like 18, 19 years old. I forget if it was my, I got the sew, I got the white sewing machine and the serger like basically for Christmas slash my birthday because they're both um, right around each other. I love this mostly because of how this opens. <laughs> um, it's really super easy to thread because of how this whole section pulls off um, compared to other sergers that I've worked with. It is unfortunately a bit slower than other sergers I have worked with, um, but you know she's been she's been a good baby to me for almost twenty years now. Not quite, but almost. Uh, yeah. So 
I love this. Um, just some things that I really like about it. It has this little thing here, which you can shove needles in. I don't know if that's actually what it's for, but that's what I do. I store extra needles in there whenever I take, um, if I'm doing a three thread serge instead of four thread, I'll take this out and hide it there temporarily so that I don't lose my serger needle. Um, uh, it has a really easy mechanism for, like in here, you can disengage the, um, this blade for if you are, don't want to cut. Um, it also has a really easy way to do a rolled hem because this little bit just slides out of its house. And then you got to get it back in. I'll put that back in in a second. Eh. Hard to do one-handed. Um, so on sergers, you have four threads running through your machine, two needles, two loopers. Um, and then over here on the side, we've got all of my controls. This is the, the wheel. Uh, this is the stitch length. This is the differential. Also over here, there is a control and this is the distance on the blade. And this, uh, this kind of controls how much gets cut off and how wide your searching ends up being. Um, okay. So the differential, um, Let's see, so like I said, this controls your stitch length. This differential button back here actually helps you control the feed. It um, This is useful if you're doing like lettuce leafing and various other things. There, there's a few different things that you use that for, which I'll talk about. Um, so, and then, yeah, there's a setup of four threads that get loaded all in the back here. So what I want to talk about right now is there is your normal serger thread, which is very similar, usually slightly lighter weight, but very similar to your normal sewing thread. And then for stretching, for stretch materials, and particularly for what I'm about to do, I'm gonna use this special stuff called Willie Nylon. Now focus on my hand. Okay, do you see that? How it's kind of got like a texture to it. Um, yeah. So this is, sometimes it's nylon, sometimes it's polyester. Depends on the brand. These are from the name brand Woolly Nylon, um, but several other companies make a stretch. Um, I have some right here. This one is the Guterman version of a thread of a stretch thread. And let's see. This one has a slightly different texture. I personally really prefer the Woolly Nylon texture. Let me see if I can show them to you side by side. Um, this one's soft. This one has more crimps in it, I guess, to me. Like, that's what I see. It's a little... So, I feel like this one works a little bit better for stretch, but I couldn't get my hands on that and had to pick up uh, some of this. Uh, I believe... Um, Maxilock also makes a version that they call Maxilock Lock Stretch. Um, there's several companies that make it. So yeah, it's just kind of, it's, it's for stretch fabrics. So most of the time I only use this on the loopers. You use it on the loopers because this helps provide stretch. Um, whereas these two help you provide stability. You can on a serger use it on all of them from my understanding. I have actually not tried that. It might be really good on like swimsuit material or something or something where you want a lot of stretch it might be worthwhile using all of it um as the woolly nylon but yeah and then also sometimes i know i've mentioned it before i will put woolly nylon on a bobbin and use that in bobbins on a regular sewing machine for specific applications um it's usually when i'm doing zigzag or a double needle on a stretch fabric so you have to make sure when you're threading this that you hit all of these little points. Mine is really nice because it's color coded here. So each each looper has its color. Those colors correspond down here. And then each one has a little dot next to it. So like there's a purple dot and there's a blue dot. So purple, well, I guess it's a purple triangle, blue dot. So you just follow those um, and everything gets threaded perfectly. Um, like I said, I really like this because it's easy access. A lot of sergers, uh, have stuff right here and you kind of got to work around it. This is so nice that it just comes out like this. Okay. I'm going to show you a quick way 
to re-thread a serger if you have one. This is my favorite way of doing it. And anybody who doesn't know how to do this, I'm sorry that it's taking you this many years to learn. Okay, so we're gonna tie a knot. Um, it's very important that you tie opposites. So, this one went over and it's going under because you want a balanced tiny knot and if you pull it it shouldn't be able to come undone okay that is the most important thing if you get that knot right then you can always re-thread your serger and this works with regular thread it also works with woolen allen it doesn't just have to be so we're gonna load each and every single one of these So this thread went over, means this time it needs to come from the back and go under. Again, check it, make sure it doesn't pull out. Going over, under. It shouldn't be able to pull through. Okay, so let me here. I'll, I'll just try to show you. This one is short. Um, see, if you do it the wrong way and you go over and put this one under, here, let me see if it'll do it. Watch, it probably won't. It'll probably be just fine. You see how it, it's actually moving down the length of the thread. It means it's not balanced and it's not the right. Uh, right way, so that's why you gotta... I know that there's probably a, a thing, this might be a, a, a square knot. Um, I'm sure that someone out there can tell me. So it should be balanced and not able to come undone. With your foot up, you literally can just very carefully pull these through. That one, the thread broke. Where was it? Caught. Oh, it got caught right there. That's annoying. Alright. Get out of my way. I'll re-thread it. I always do a couple just to start with. Just to make sure that it's going. And now I'm gonna run a piece of test fabric through this. Here's my test fabric. making sure so this one this is the first side I did and the tension on the bottom was just a little tight so I loosened it up and did it on this side and now just I don't know if you can see how it's scalloping a little bit and then on this side it's not but that's sometimes you just have to adjust some things this also um, those wheels have a tendency to move I picked it up from the doctor like I said from the, the yeah from the machine doctor and probably in transport those got all smushed around 
So um, my machine has sort of like a general, this four means that it's about average tension on it. And uh, a good trick if you're ever having a problem with tension on your machine is to thread all four of these in different colors and then just run it through, run things through and see which thread looks like it's pulling. You can see an example of using four different threads to tell, to, to check your um, tension here. So you use four different colored threads and it allows you to know which one is pulling where and or not working right. And that will help you if you need to rethread or adjust your tension. Also, this is an excellent book to get. Um, I found this at a used bookstore. So it's old. Uh, the pictures inside of it are very like 80s-ish. I don't know when this particular version was printed. They're either, yeah, they're like 70s or 80s looking. Um, but it does a really good job of breaking. This is from 1989. Uh, I was right. So this one does a really great job of breaking down a bunch of different things with your serger. And I highly recommend if you have a serger, picking up this book or another book about sergers. Um, they probably have come out with a newer version since then. And this one just happened to be what I found at the used bookstore. So here's some of the first ones. Does not turn out ridiculously cute. I mean, like, ah, I'm so excited. I can't wait to put this back on the fucking hoodie. Um, yeah, that's gonna be so cute. So I have, I did end up using the ribbing, and I have reattached the hood. <gasps> Look at how cool this looks. It's so so, so cool. So I re reattached it. I'm okay with it sitting apart. Like I didn't need it to meet in the center, but I did make sure that it was equally spaced, or at least originally when I pinned it, it was, and hopefully it still is. It's it's pretty equally spaced, I think, still. Anyways, um, so yeah. Next, we're gonna add in. Um, next, I'm gonna add in the sides, and then do the back, and then I gotta figure out the arms. The next thing that I'm going to do on the machine is a rolled hem. So I'm going to do that on the triangles uh, that go into the sides, into the into the gores or days, however you want to call them. Um, so I actually already did it here on this one. Uh, this isn't really a rolled hem. This is more of a narrow hem. Uh, this is a little too heavy. If I was just doing the lace, then it would be a rolled hem because it would roll. Uh, this is more of just a narrow hem. I am not doing it with too tight of a, or too, like, short of a stitch length because I was worried about it um, gumming up the machine just with the thickness. But so I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I have done to change the setup. So first thing that I have done is we will zoom in right here, and I have changed this so there is only one needle. So I've taken out the left needle and I have left the right needle. Okay, so I've removed this from my machine. Um, some machines have a little toggle right here-ish that you slide back. Uh, you know the, um, 
was it the baby locks that I used to use at one of my jobs? I had like a little switch here. Um, this white has this thing that you pull out. Um, also, when I was double checking some stuff in the manual, I discovered that uh, mine was a floor model, so I don't have all of the pieces. But when I was double checking some stuff, I discovered that there's apparently a smaller version of this. So um, that's useful for some things. So I need to like see if I can find a replacement one. So there might be a switch here, but basically you're going to pull this back so that this allows the threads to become like to, to do much smaller. Now, some other things that I'm changing, we're going to come over here. So this, uh, this is basically the width of a stitch or of the, the serge. So I have turned this down. Um, mine doesn't really like to go all the way down to four. So I went down to about five. Um, this is millimeters. So you have anywhere between four and seven millimeters on this machine of how wide you can make your serge edge. Um, okay. And then let me turn the machine sideways and we're going to look at my stitch length and my differential. So let's talk about this for a second. So this is the stitch length, the, um, lower the number, the more stitches, the higher the number, the um, fewer stitches there are. So this is the distance basically between the stitches. So um, if you wanted a really solid band, you could go all the way down to one and then you would get like a really solid uh, ribboning effect of stitches. I don't quite want that right now. I'm sticking it around a two-ish. Um, most of the time when I'm sewing when I was sewing everything else, when I'm doing seams and whatnot, I usually work more around a three or a four. Um, a five is if I'm really just trying to search something like super fast and loose, like for washing something usually. So think of it kind of like basting. That would be like a, a basting stitch. There are there are different occasions where you use all of these, but uh, the, the somewhere in here would be kind of your normal and then here would be tiny stitches, okay? So then we're gonna talk about the differential. Um, the differential changes, okay, so there's, like on a sewing machine, there are feed dogs that pull your fabric in, and on the serger, there's two independent ones that you can change the kind of differential and feeding of it. Here, let me, let me show you. Okay, so the differential knob controls these two feed dogs, the front one and the back one. Um, when your differential is set at one, these are neutral. They move. They are moving at the same speed. So they are feeding things at the same speed. You get nice, even feed. That's great for most fabrics, um, uh, anything woven in particular, uh, or anything that's more stable. You don't really need um, to mess with the differential when you're working with a very stable, sturdy fabric. Now, when you are working with something that is stretchy, a lot of the times you want to up your differential because when, so when you go above one, you are using a positive dif differential. So one to two, so 1.5 two is positive differential. That means that this front one moves faster than this back one and we'll be feeding fabric into it faster. In some cases, this is useful because you can set it at two and you can get a gathering stitch with this. Like you can gather something with a positive differential of two. It's also useful if you're sewing something stretchy that, mi um, that might be uh, pulling out this way. So that way you're less likely to get um, wobbles in your fabric. It, it kind of helps feed this fabric faster than this pulls it through. So you're less like, so instead of, so your fabric stays bunched up instead of spreading out. Cause you know, and like, I don't know if you've ever searched something and your fabric ends up like the fibers spread out. Um, whereas this will help keep it in. Now, if you want to spread the fibers out, which again, there are certain places where that is a useful application as well. You turn the differential down below one and then you are entering a negative differential. So And that means that the front feed dog moves slower, takes longer, and the back one is moving faster, which means it's pulling it through and this is keeping stuff behind. So on my machine, 
you have the two 1.51 uh, a, and a, a 0.7. Some machines have an N for neutral. Um, mine is all numbers, so. Um, with the stretch, so that's why I was saying if you wanted to make like a lettuce leaf edge, you would turn your differential down to seven and do a pearl edge or whatever, and then you'd get that really like ruffly edge that um, can finish something. So let me pop my foot back in place. All right. And now we're going to do a narrow hem on the bottom of the big panel. So whenever you're um, serging, if you're using pins to pin something together, you really want to make sure that you're running them parallel and far enough in that they're not getting under the foot. Um, you can run them across this way if you want to, but with a serger in particular, because of the blade, you have to make sure you take them out. You don't want to chop your pins apart with blades because that's bad. Bad for you machine, bad for the pins. Okay. see it's made this teeny tiny, tiny little hem and you can even do it right Turn a corner with a serger. Sometimes I reach in and pull things out of here because I've had it accidentally get caught and pulled back up in. So I'm just always very careful and I try to keep my fingers down here, not anywhere near the blade. Um. So I have surged the bottom edge of the triangle. The sides will get surged in when I put it into the seams. So there you go. Well, I'm surging. Now um, I did all of these first so that I don't have to deal with this way. I can surge it, set, um, place it right in next to the end of the ribbing and I don't have to deal with um, trying to hem it afterwards. It's already done. Um, and I don't have to worry about working around the ribbing or anything. So that's why I'm hemming them first, going to put them in the seam, close everything out from there. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, really quick, I'm going to talk about how I did, I'm going to do the back. So I have done my best to try to make this, um, fold the back in half evenly. Um, I went in and I went ahead and I pressed a hard line into it to help. It's not perfect, but then again, I think when I cut the side, they weren't perfect either. So I kind of used my seam lines at the top of my hood and just kind of the bottom. Hopefully it's not going to be noticeable too much and just look cute. Okay, so I'm going to go in and mark basically about a quarter inch down from the top of that, so that gives me some like seam allowance room. Bam. Okay. 
And I'm going to very carefully and with great uh, caution, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to use my scissor flat and basically like work through the layers. Um, trying not to distort, pull, shift anything too much. Basically, right oop, to that line. I'm gonna do it one side at a time. I'm gonna start with this side, put that in, and then do the other side from the bottom up. We're gonna do a quick little tip on finishing a tail on serging. So this is what I do. Um, there's a couple of different things that you can use. I am using an embroidery sort of needle with a big old eye on the end. So it's a fatter needle, big eye. I put the needle into the fabric and then I take this and I will thread it into the needle and pull that through. There's also like a, a hook latch hook type turner thing that you can also buy and use but um, when I don't have one of those on hand I just use a regular embroidery needle and I pull it through and then it's all encased in here. Um, I will then clip off whatever I didn't put through, pull through and I will also usually take just a little bit of fray check kind of the bottom edge even though it's been turned inside I just makes me feel like it's a little more secure Okay, so I made some further decisions about the sleeves, and I'm going to walk you through them. The first thing that I'm going to do right now is cut off the uh, bottom. Boop, boop, boop. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, again, uh, since this has become the serger project, I'm going to set up the serger for a lettuce leaf rolled hem, or narrow hem. Um, which I kind of talked about already in the whole uh, differential setting and whatnot. So I'm going to set it up to purposely get a wavy, what we call a lettuce leaf edge. It'll basically, as, as it goes in, it'll stretch and the, the edge will end up looking like the edge of a piece of like bib lettuce, right? Um, like that already has a hole. So what I've decided I'm going to do is make a layered sleeve um, with the lettuce leaf edge. And it's going to get, we're in the lettuce leaf, first this black, I'm going to use what I can on the remainder of this. Do another like couple of inches lettuce leaf cuff. And then um, probably do a third one with just some lace. It'll either be more of the lace that I've been using on everything, or I will see what I've got in my lace sash that looks similar and is a nice actual gathered border lace. So those are gone. Um, I am I am planning on changing this, so I actually am just going to go ahead and. I want to fit the sleeve to me a little bit better than it currently is. I don't like how baggy it is. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut off this serging. You can see I already kind of drew on this one. You can see I already kind of drew a line where I think I'm going to take the sleeve in, but I might do it slightly more now that I, I might end up doing like a this. So we get um, kind of a bell shape. Not a huge Do the lettuce leaf, actually. I'm just gonna end up walking you through this. out. 
I'm going to turn my differential all the way down. Okay, so out of the sleeve, I was able to get these two trapezoids um, uh, as about the close as possible to the exact same size. These are going to, I'm going to actually uh, let us leave this edge again to kind of help work with that bell feeling that I think I want to create now moving forward with this sleeve. So we're going to let us leave this edge on both of these. Again, we'll just show you how freaking easy this is. And you'll get you'll get different results on different types of stretch and different thicknesses of so like the lettuce leaf might come out this is thinner than the sweatshirt, so the lettuce leaf might come out more more, more pronounced. This is our lettuce leaf. See, it's definitely actually a bit more pronounced um, on this. Now, a couple of things. I probably could have made the stitches, probably could have made the stitches closer to each other. It doesn't really bother me, though, that they're not, um, but this would be a case where you might want to uh, have a tighter, more ribboning stitch, so you would just turn the stitch length down to, like, one. Um, but I'm perfectly okay with it how it is right here. I don't mind the purple peeking through, especially because I have the whole purple and black lace thing going on. Um, it kind of, to me, is reminiscent of that. So, Okay, so after pinching some things out on myself, you can see this is where I was originally going to take it in based off of the original fit of the... Um, I was going to take it in and taper it off with the uh, normal cuff band. But now that I'm going to add this, I am going to make this second curvy line. So we're going to get this nice little bell thing. And then I think um, I'm going to just use some of the black lace that I used already and make a final um, layer of cuff down there. And then all of it will get, I think I'm going to make that layer of cuff this long so I can put it all in with one zigzag stitch about here. And then I don't need to worry too much about pulling or distortion it'll all be sewn in one place I don't have to worry about like sewing it on multiple levels and trying to hide said stitches we'll just hide it in the one spot there I would like you to note that this has been cut on the bias so that it has more stretch it's not it's not this well hold on let me see if I can get this on the straight green it's not the stretchiest lace on the straight green so in order for this lettuce leaf edge to work better Putting it on the bias will help. So I'm going to show you the layout, how I'm going to lay this out. I'm laying this out flat, open, uh, because it's going to be easiest to stitch. And then the sleeve and the body of the sweatshirt are actually going to get stitched in one go um, from bottom up and down to the bottom of the sleeve, because uh, that's just an easier way to put it in. So this will actually go into the body of the sweatshirt flat before I sew every, the, it all closed. So it gets closed in one big old seam. Um, and if you look, that's probably, I think that's how this sweatshirt was constructed in the first place. That's a pretty common practice of how to do this sort of thing. Um, because it, 
honestly it's just faster it's faster in construction you don't have to worry it's much easier to set the sleeve when it's flat like this it's much easier to uh, stitch one long seam up um, it's just faster construction method so Yeah, I'm just because I don't want this to shift too much, I'm going to put this all in and with pins, which I don't normally do so much, you know? If you've watched my channel, you know. Um, so yeah, that, so there's about the same amount here as under here. Um, so this is going to get zigzag stitched here, and then I'm going to put the sleeve into the body of the uh, sweatshirt and I will show you guys how I do that too. And here's the final look. Very, very excited with it. Um, very happy how it came out. There's a couple things that I probably would have done differently um, in hindsight, but when you start a project that you don't really know where you're going with it, you know, sometimes you make choices. Um, I am ridiculously happy with the hood. Like, I love the hood. Um, I got my little sandworm chopsticks in. I love how the sleeves turned out, although I wish that I had enough purple fabric, um, which this is one of those things that I can't, I couldn't have changed. Um, I wish I had enough purple fabric so that the lace was actually in the center, just because I feel like this is going to end up catching on things a lot easier. But overall, I still love the way that these sleeves turned out. Um, I would either have... Um, had I known exactly what I was going to do with the sleeves, I would have either left them stitched in so that I didn't have to deal with them um, and just sliced and done all the alterations through here. Or I would have taken them out and at this point, um, I feel like if I had moved them up, I feel like I would just like an actual sleeve uh, versus sort of more of this type of drop sleeve. But that's a small, that's a small detail that's not that big of an issue honestly uh but yeah no it's really freaking cute 
I super love it. Like I said, I love, love how like roomy it is. Um, the hood like just makes me so happy. I need to find the drawstring. It came out in a wash at one point and I have it somewhere, but so yeah, my new hood. Yeah. I don't know that I necessarily need the drawstring though. Although if I did need to be cozy, you know, having the drawstring there would like, tie it up. I like how this little, um, I was trying to figure out how to, cause I had all of this ribbing on the bottom of the sweater that I was cutting off. So I really liked that I used this here. I thought that was like a very ingenious little thing. I like, I mean, I am left with a small pile of scraps at the end of this. I really did make um, the most of that sweater. And I'm just so excited that it just matches this purple like so well. Very comfy. It's gonna be nice and warm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is like the stuff that I kind of really love to do that I don't do as often as I feel like I should, like this altered fashion type of thing. I'd love to figure out how to make it a business, maybe, because I would love to do it more um, and like for other people, but it's really hard because I don't know how to, like, like the idea of buying stuff just randomly and making things and putting it out to sell is a little like a lot of money up front, possibly nobody's going to like it. Um, I also like to, to like it would be nice to do things with people uh so if anyone's interested in commission or something and like wants some sort of weird altered i can't make this exact thing because i'm never going to find this sweater again but and, and i mean that's the other thing is because i do like to do a lot of it out of like upcycled things or thrifted stuff when i do it um sometimes you know i can't repeat it so it's like a one shot one and done thing so it's one of a kind item which is really cool and it takes a lot of work and thought and process. I mean, this took me, this took me like three days of work. I mean, it's three. I mean, again, depending on what exact price you're paying, like the going rate for hourly sewing, um, this would be like a $500 sweatshirt. shirt. It's always interesting to think about those things, like the amount of time and effort that I, it's custom, it's one of a kind, I don't know if I would feel comfortable charging somebody $500 for this, but you know, that would I rambled about that. I don't know if I'm going to include any of that in, in this video, but it's good knowledge to think about. Um, I mean, that's the thing is when somebody's asking you to make something for them, I am not going to charge less than that. But I'm trying to get like, okay with charging large amounts. So if anybody wants to uh, spend a couple hundred dollars on a custom piece of some sort, you know, like altered fashion, and I just go wild and make something up like this, let me know. Though most sergers also thread all the same way, but you have to make sure you get all of these little, whoops, sorry, you have to make sure that you, we're just throwing my camera all around today, okay. 